Donald Trump is taking jabs at Rand Paul, and by jabs, I'm not talking about vaccines. Get it? Ha 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 ha. Shut up. No, is this thing? Is this mic on? Because that's just a really good joke. Anyway. Let's take a look. Statement by Donald J. Trump. Do you think Rand Paul will apologize for spending nearly $1 million on another candidate in Ohio's 15th district congressional race after I had already endorsed Mike Carey? In any event, Mike went on to an unprecedented victory, more than doubling. The second place finisher in Rand's candidate came in distant third out of 11. Rand is a different kind of guy, but I like him a lot anyway, and I'm proud to have endorsed him when he ran. Do you think he learned his lesson? So I guess he's like threatening Rand Paul that maybe he won't endorse him again. And it's a very strange timing because in this country, there's not a lot of people standing up to medical tyranny. There's not a lot of people countering Dr. Fauci, especially with the experience that Rand Paul has, not just politically, but medically. So why is Donald Trump taking shots at Rand Paul now? When to be quite frank, Rand Paul is providing better leadership for freedom, America, and this country than Donald Trump is. Take a look at Rand Paul's recent new video. It's time for us to resist. They can't arrest all of us. They can't keep all of your kids home from school. They can't keep every government building closed, although I've got a long list of ones they might keep closed or might ought to keep closed. We don't have to accept the mandates, lockdowns, and harmful policies of the petty tyrants and bureaucrats. We can simply say no, not again. Nancy Pelosi, you will not arrest or stop me or anyone on my staff from doing our jobs. We have either had COVID, had the vaccine, or been offered the vaccine. We will make our own health choices. We will not show you a passport. We will not wear a mask. We will not be forced into random screenings and testings so you can continue your drunk with power reign over the Capitol. President Biden, we will not accept your agency's mandates or your reported moves towards a lockdown. No one should follow the CDC's anti-science mask mandates. And if you want to shut down federal agencies again, some of which aren't even back to work yet, I will stop every bill coming through the Senate with an amendment to cut their funding if they don't come back to work in person. Local bureaucrats and union bosses, we will not allow you to do more harm to our children again this year. Children are not at any more risk from COVID than they are from the seasonal flu. Every adult who works in schools has either had the vaccine or had their chance to get vaccinated. There is no reason for mask mandates, part-time schools, or any lockdown measures. Children are falling behind in school and are being harmed physically and psychologically by the tactics that you have used to keep them from the classroom during the last year. We won't allow it again. If a school system attempts to keep children from full-time in-person school, I will hold up every bill with two amendments, one to defund them and another to allow parents the choice of where the money goes for their child's education. Do I sound fed up to you? That's because I am. I'm not a career politician. I practiced medicine for 33 years. I graduated from Duke Medical School. I've worked in emergency rooms. I've studied immunology and virology and I ultimately chose to become an eye surgeon. I have been telling everyone for a year now that Dr. Fauci and other public health bureaucrats were not following the science, and I've been proven right time and time again. Of course he's talking about peacefully, but this is the type of leadership I've been looking for from Donald Trump, and I haven't gotten because he decided to go from when he ran a vaccine skeptic to a full-blown vaccine salesman, earning him the nickname for me, Grandpa Moderna. Here's Grandpa Moderna recently in Dan Bongino's interview saying that Operation Warp Speed vaccine program saved upwards of 100 million lives. I say let the teachers get the vaccine. They should get the vaccine. I hope they do. Again, it's something I'm very proud of. I think if we didn't come up during the Trump administration with a vaccine, you could have 100 million people dead, just like you had in, in 1917. You take the Spanish flu, 100 million people, up to 100 million people died. I think we'd be in that territory. This has been great for the world. But the teachers, let them go, get the vaccine. I don't know how they're being dealt with. They have different unions, but they have one in particular. They don't want to ever go back to work. 
It's crazy. Now, this is such a stupid, dishonest, and completely fake talking point that I don't even think Dr. Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, or anyone of that stature would dare claim they saved 100 million lives. But leave it to Grandpa Moderna, the vaccine salesman, Donald Trump, to make that claim himself. Because it's not about everybody else. It's about him, his ego, and how much he helped you with that program. I think if we didn't come up during the Trump administration with a vaccine, you could have 100 million people dead. And they want me to do public service messages and everything about everybody taking the vaccine. And look, I guess in a certain way, I'm the father of the vaccine because I was the one that pushed it. You know, to get it done in less than nine months was a miracle. Fauci said it would take three to five years. He thought it was uh, something that just wouldn't be that effective because it would take so long to get. We, I pushed the FDA like they have never been pushed before. I pushed the FDA and companies and everybody else involved like nobody's ever been pushed before. And now you have it rolling out. And frankly, they could have done it last week. They could have even done it a week sooner and they heard from me. But this has been a great, a really medical miracle. They call it a medical miracle. And uh, it's going to have a tremendous impact. 95% effective. We have Moderna coming out next week very soon. We have Johnson & Johnson, a one-shot vaccine coming out. All great companies. All great companies. All great companies. All great companies. Would you recommend to our audience that they get the vaccine then? I would. I would recommend it. And I would recommend it to... A lot of people that don't want to get it, and a lot of those people... Now, I have to be fair. I voted for Donald Trump in 2020. I am a registered Republican, and I don't even consider him a top five Republican right now. Of course, he's more popular than everybody, but I'm talking strictly from a leadership and against medical tyranny perspective. Candace Owens is doing a way better job than him standing up against this stuff. Marjorie Taylor Greene is constantly calling out how it's not FDA approved, doing a way better job than Donald Trump. Ron DeSantis, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, is doing a better job than Donald Trump. Rand Paul is doing a way better job than Donald Trump, and maybe he's trying to take a shot at him because he knows Rand Paul is going to run in 2024, and in my perspective, deserves it more than Trump, he would get my vote because he's taking a way better stance against the medical stuff. And one other person that's doing a way better job than Donald Trump standing up against medical tyranny is Thomas Massey, who if Trump got his way, wouldn't even be there. Last year during the lockdown and what I would consider the communist scam takeover of America that Donald Trump himself Trojan horsed in and played along with for a long time and then cried about as if he wasn't the president. He said, looks like a third rate grandstander named Rep Thomas Massey, a congressman from unfortunately a truly great state, Kentucky, wants to vote against the new Save Our Workers bill in Congress. He just wants the publicity. He can't stop it, only delay, which is both dangerous and costly. Workers and small businesses need money now in order to survive virus wasn't their fault it was hell dealing with the dems had to give up some stupid things in order to get the big picture done 90 percent great win back house but throw massey out of the republican party thomas massey's been taking a huge stand against forced vaccination forced masking and doing a 20 times better job than donald trump's been doing over the last year but he wanted to throw him out of the party then and listen in Thomas Massey's own words why he opposed the Workers' Bill, a.k.a. the CARES Act, a.k.a. the multi-trillion dollar socialist bill that basically ushered in the new era of universal basic income, which is something that Andrew Yang wanted to do a few years ago. That's what Trump was defending. Here's what Thomas Massey had to say. Take a look. Congressman, both sides of the chamber didn't seek to let you do this recorded uh, vote. Well, they didn't even give me a minute to speak in a four-hour debate. That's There's a big cover-up in there. You believe uh, it's a cover-up, sir? Well, they're trying to cover up their votes. They had enough people there to pass the bill, but they still refused to have a recorded vote. And they told me they were trying to protect members. Don't you believe that that's the case? There's 435 members in a room that can't hold that many. No, no. They're trying to protect the members who are there from political ramifications. Sir, both sides of the chamber, your side as well as the Democrats, as well as the White House, have said that they didn't want you to do this. Why press forward into the bill that... Everybody agrees it should be passed. Like I said in there, I came here this week to make sure our republic doesn't die in an empty chamber by unanimous consent. These people need to do their jobs. If they're telling people to drive a truck, if they're telling people to bag groceries and grow their food, then by, by golly, they can be in there and they can vote. And that's, what, and that's what we did this week. They came, and you can see it didn't delay the vote any. They sat on their cans yesterday here. They didn't do a thing yesterday. They were trying to say this would delay it to have a recorded vote. The truth, if you're willing to report it, is they don't want a recorded vote. They don't want to be on record of making the biggest mistake in history. Is there Congress, a response Congress, to Donald Congress Trump Massey? calling you a third-rate grandstander? I'm at least second-rate. 
you. <laughs> Congressman Massey, nicely done. Um, who, was it, who was it that told you um, that Gosh, they were protecting their members? No respect. Who told you they were protecting Con their Congress members, sir? Who was it that we, I, I, was, I was right above you Pelosi guys. Pelosi and McCarthy, when I was right there with them. Okay. And you believe this is the best method to do this, sir, is to yeah, force everybody to come back? Cars. Hey, come, come, cars. Cars. come on, I, I gave you an interview. Very good. Thank you, sir. One of the only, if the only, congressman or woman standing up against what would be ushering in a new era of multi-trillion dollar infrastructure and worker bills, compensating people as the government forced closed their business, and a 15 days to slow the spread, which turned into an extension, which turns into what looks like eternity at this point, Thomas Massey had the balls and the brain to say no then and let America know why. Thank God for him, but Trump needs to calm down with this trend of one, trying to kick out the only people in the Republican Party who are actually standing up for us, and two, selling Operation Warp Speed as- I think if we didn't come up during the Trump administration with a vaccine, you could have 100 million people dead. And if you look at Open Secrets, which keeps track of pharmacy lobbying and all lobbyists, you will see that Donald Trump is the number two recipient from big pharma lobbying money. So maybe he really turned from a skeptic to a salesman naturally, but for decades, we've understood that lobbying money, including not just companies, but foreign countries, controls a lot of our Congress. But I guess if you get somebody very likable in there, people pretend like that couldn't possibly happen, even though it literally did happen, and I'm probably the only one who will report on that. I mean, if that's what he wants to do, that's fine, but I wouldn't vote for him again, and I would say he's not even a top five Republican in my mind. And what's extra annoying is if Obama or Clinton or Romney or McCain said something so fake and annoying on Dan Bongino's platform, I'm sure Dan Bongino would have said something about it, but because it's Donald Trump, roll out the red carpet, everybody just licks his boots and won't dare question his lack of leadership against the medical tyranny. Yes, he said that he thinks masks are psychologically abusive on children, and I appreciate it, but what Rand Paul said in his video is a real stance against medical tyranny with a real call to action. What Donald Trump did is acting like a big circus clown, selling vaccinations, and then taking a weak, most of the time non-existent, occasionally just a little word here or there about how he thinks what they're doing is bad. China shared the genetic sequence of the virus on January 11th. According to Ivanka Trump, Donald Trump partnered with Moderna on January 13th of 2020, just two days after. And she rightfully said the Moderna NIH vaccine because it's not just owned by Moderna, the NIH claims joint ownership over the Moderna's coronavirus vaccine as well. Bill Gates has been backing Moderna for a long, long time and Bill Gates also said that Trump offered him a job as a White House science advisor. Trump also put Alex Azar, pharma lobbyist, as the head of HHS when he got in to quote unquote drain the swamp. So maybe Trump had a change of heart. Maybe he was doing the best that he could do. Maybe it's tough, but something that nobody wants to admit is maybe he ended up like every other politician taking pharmacy lobbying money, working with people like Fauci and Gates, and selling pharmacy products, and just unfortunately doing the status quo. But before I go, I just want to show you how Republicans are setting you up for failure too. And there's all these laws that people aren't aware of that are going to probably work against you soon unless enough people like Rand Paul said peacefully non-comply. For instance, recently a federal judge agreed that mandating vaccines on cruise lines are okay. And this is why Alan Dershowitz said this last year. Let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread a disease, even if you disagree, you have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, if can I stop you? State, Did, yeah, no right state, not to be vaccinated, meaning if they decide you have to be vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated? Absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. Although I, from a moral perspective and a legal perspective, disagree with him, I get what he's talking about because there is a court case, Jacobson versus Massachusetts, where they literally decided that in the 1900s. Hopefully they redecide it now because I think it's messed up and outdated, but they could use that as pretense for what they're doing now. Look at this out of Tallahassee.com. It says, Florida might not force you to get a COVID vaccine, but it can, here's why. And it says very clearly in this article, the authorizing law gives the state health officer the power to take whatever action she or he deems necessary, including ordering an individual to be examined, tested, vaccinated, treated, or quarantined 
vaccine for communicable diseases that present a severe danger to public health. Anyone who is unwilling to be vaccinated may be subject to quarantine, the law says. And if there's no practical way to quarantine that person, the state health officer may use any means necessary to vaccinate or treat the individual. That includes calling on law officers to help him carry out those duties. And if you click on the authorizing law link, it brings you to a Florida website where they talk about a 2020 statute. So despite the fact that they keep telling you that it will be optional in their state, it might not be. And I'm not blaming DeSantis or Trump for that specifically because it's a way bigger issue, but we need real leaders. I'm just being honest. Candace Owens is doing 50 times the job that Trump is doing, taking a stand for the children, for the country, and against forced and mandatory vaccination. Rand Paul is doing a 20 times better job. Thomas Massey is doing a 20 times better job, despite the shortfalls I just told you with Ron DeSantis, which is very creepy with how they can authorize that according to some sort of statute or law, look into it. I don't know exactly when that's gonna come into play or how, but he's even doing a better job than Trump. Marjorie Taylor Greene's doing a better job than Trump. There's even Democrats at this point, like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Russell Brand, who are doing a better job than Trump. I mean, he's turned into Grandpa Moderna, the vaccine salesman clown, who seems to just run people in circles for his own selfish interests. Sell this idea that hundreds of millions of people would have died without his vaccine, which is so dishonest. How are we gonna defeat this never-ending PCR test constantly testing us, using tests and deaths and cases and vaccines and non-vaccines to keep us in a state of panic, lockdown, fear, and forced medicine? It'll never end with leadership like Donald Trump. So I would love to see in the Republican Party more people like Rand Paul, but also more people who voted for him and support him calling this type of stuff out because when politicians are allowed to do unfettered nonsense like he's doing they're just going to get worse they're incentivized to do it and it's disgusting as somebody who voted for him to see him spend more time going at rand paul and thomas massey than he does about phony republicans like governor abbott who pretends to be free speech and then tries to kick off gab which i don't even really use to be honest but it's run by a christian conservative who's trying to stand up for free speech take a look at what governor abbott did Anti-Semitic platforms like Gab have no place in Texas and certainly do not represent Texas values. What does represent Texas values is legislation like this by Representative King and Representative Coleman that fights anti-Semitism in Texas trying to use the guise of anti-Semitism to get Gab banned or punished. This is who the Republican Party under Trump really is. I know people don't want to face it because he did do a way better job than like a McCain or Romney, but... I could, and by the way, we could write a book on governors. I, I, I am the king of governors because I could tell you the good ones and the bad ones. And you have some very good ones and you have some really, really bad ones, both parties. But you have some good ones and some really bad, bad ones. But I noticed the way they're going after DeSantis. I noticed the way they're going after our great governor from Texas. And he's done, Greg Abbott, he's done a you know really good job. Trump keeps promoting and endorsing Governor Abbott, but today Governor Abbott wanted to close down elective surgeries again, and he's trying to pressure hospitals to close down elective surgeries. This is so gross and authoritarian. Closing down elective surgeries in hospitals ended up getting nurses fired. There's backups because of it, because they didn't allow people for months, so there's a huge backlog. And now this phony Republican moron is trying to do it again, and that's who gets Donald Trump favor instead of Rand Paul? Things are starting to get a lot more clear. Let me know what you think in the comment section, but the way forward and my strategy is to identify that the Overton window keeps flying towards psychotic. The Democrats get psychotic, the medical establishment and bureaucrats get psychotic, and the Republicans just follow them, justify half of what they're doing, and pitch you the idea of psychotic light. If they go full socialist, the Republicans go socialist too, but just slightly less than they're doing. That's how they operate. That's the Overton window. It's turning into a W. WWE spectacle where most of it's fake and people keep buying into team red team blue So what you can do if you're a registered Republican like myself and you're still gonna vote for them like myself Is stop just clapping like seals for them ask them why they're doing what they're doing and hold them accountable Just like the politicians you don't like that's the only way to win because at this rate if Republicans keep clapping for these leaders, they're going to take you to the same place as the Democrats are taking you. And vaccine passports and mandatory vaccination, whether the state law says so or not, whether Trump says so or not, they are trying to do it. It's happening all over the world. And it's going to happen here on a corporate, local, or state level, depending where you live, peacefully, honestly, legally. But either we end up like a communist China style system that's even worse than what China's doing now in a Black Mirror sci-fi 1984 episode, or we 
put our foot down and say, we don't get to be slaves, peasants, serfs, and second tier citizens on lockdown like a prisoner. Just because you're counting COVID-19 cases with a PCR test, it doesn't make any sense. And chances are, when winter comes around and seasons change, if it's anything like other respiratory illnesses that we faced, it's not gonna go away ever, maybe. So this doesn't give politicians and pharmacy companies a lifelong dictator communist reign over you where you have to get in line for their product every year or else you're banned from society. That's what's going on. That's what's happening. Rand Paul's getting serious about it. Thomas Massey's getting serious about it. Candace Owens is getting serious about it. Donald Trump is not, and he's starting to attack and badmouth people who are doing a way better job than him. Not the easiest video, but people need to figure this stuff out. I've been talking about it for a while. God bless you, God bless your family. Appreciate you so much, and these hats are back in stock, godblesshats.com. Completely optional, but that's what it is. Have a good day. Follow me on Telegram to get around censorship and never miss an episode. It's t.me slash dreamrarechat or at dreamrarechat on Telegram. On Instagram, I'm just at dreamrare. Follow me there. Have a beautiful day. I'll be back.